am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. We are working hard to organize our videos, set them up in the Global Math Institute website for easy access. Now here, let me thank some of our students who have been sending requests about questions which are related to Waterloo Math Contest, which is just tomorrow. So today I've taken a few questions and I hope many of these students will definitely benefit and most subscribers and viewers will love to uh, go through these questions, right? They are really good and interesting. Here is question number 18 from February 2017 test paper. The question here is, suppose that M and N are positive integers with square root 7 plus square root 48 equals to M plus square root N. The value of M square plus N square is what? Extremely sorry for that poor printout. However, the contest is tomorrow. So I thought, let me first uh, share with you solutions and then we'll go for refill of the cartridge. So let me rewrite this. What we are given here is that M and N are positive integers. So let me say M and N are positive integers means belongs to whole numbers, right? So that is what is given to us. And we are also given that square root of 7 plus square root of 48 is equal to M plus square root of N. And what we need to find is what is m square plus n square equals to. Is that clear to you? Five options are given to you. So I'd like you to pause the video, answer this question, and then look into my suggestions. Fine. So how do we figure this out? Well, the method here should be straightforward. We can square both sides, right? So we are given that square root of 7 plus square root of 48 is equal to m plus square root of n. So in step number one itself, we'll just square both sides. Now both are positive, so that means we get the right answer, right? So when you square, we get 7 plus square root of 48 on the left side, and here we get m square plus 2 times m square root n uh, plus n. That's what you get. Okay. Now, we need to find what is m square plus n square. We get m square plus 2m square root n plus n. Now, let's rearrange this. These are the numbers outside the radical sign. Uh, so, we could write like this, plus 2mn square root n. Now, that means what you could do here, let me rewrite left side also, square root of 48. See, strategic thinking is very important we can equate these numbers as equal to 7 and this number as equal to that. So we have one equation with two unknowns. That means we need to assume something and we need to uh, really work out uh, some way to figure out the answer. Right. So, so we can take this assumption that the numbers and the radical signs are same. So that is definitely one of the solutions. So let's see what we get. So what we get from here is that m square plus n is 7 and 2m square root n is square root 48. Perfect. Let's square this. We get 4m square n is 48. Well, so that gives us m square n as, as 48 over 4 which is which is 12 so we get the uh, the value of m square n we know what is m square and we know what what is what is n also we need to figure out what is m square plus n square correct now how do we find the answer well it's not very difficult now so so we could always say that uh, from these two conditions we have a square and a number. When you multiply that, you get 12. So does it make some sense, ring some bell? m square and n is 12. And we also know that these are whole numbers. So what could be the possible combination? The factors of 12, 
the factors of 12 could be uh, 4 and 3 or I can write 3 and 4. Correct? So that gives you a suggestion that this could be 2 square times 3 equals to 12. So that makes sense, correct? So one of the possible solutions which you can definitely see from here is that n is 3 and m is 2, right? So, so that gives you a clue, right? So we get from here that m equals to 2 and n equals to 3. So that is possible. Let's check. So let's check the possibility. So if I substitute m equals to 2 and n equals to 3, will this equation be satisfied? If it does, that means those are the correct values. Perfect. So, so when I substitute, we get 2 square plus 3 and that is 7, right? So that works for us. So that means for sure that m equals to 2 and n equals to 3. Does it make sense? Clear? Now we know what m and n are. Substitute the value, right? So, so we get 2 square plus 3 square, right? So 2 square plus 3 square, which is 4 plus 9. And that gives you 13 as your answer, which is option E. Right? So we get our answer, which is option E. Does it make sense to you? So that is how you could answer the equation. So there is a lot of guess and check involved. However, it is systematic. And in most of the questions of this kind, you need to work on the factors, correct? So in this contest, uh, 2017, we have already seen two questions where the, the factors helped us to find the solution, right? So that is a critical strategy to solve questions. I hope that makes, makes sense. Here is question number 19. Extremely sorry for the bad print as the ink is running out. And tomorrow, it seems, uh, they have the contest. Okay, so let's go through the question. A point is equidistant from the coordinate axis if the vertical distance from the point to the x-axis is equal to the horizontal distance from the point to the y-axis. The point of intersection of the vertical line x equals to a with the line with the equation 3x plus 8y equals to 24 is equidistant from coordinates axis. What is the sum of all possible values of a? So uh, let me explain this before we get into the solution. The question is something like this, that we have a line, since it's a very bad print, we have a line which is 3x plus 8y equals to 24, correct? Now you can always find x and y intercepts to sketch this particular line. So the x intercept will be substituting y equals to 0. You get x intercept as 8 and to find the y intercept we get 24 divided by 8 which is 3. So we get a line which is kind of like this. Okay, where these values here, as we figured them out, are 3 and 8, right? So, so 24 divided by 8 is 3, and this is 8. The question really is that, uh, okay, that if we have a vertical line, we are trying to figure out the same distance. So let us say we have a vertical line, which has the same distance, let's say this is your vertical line, and this vertical line is x equals to a. Right? That's what it means, a vertical line x equals to a. And we are saying that a point on this line is same distance from both x and y. So, so that is what it is. Right? So that means this is a and that is also a. Right? These distances are same. Perfect. We need to figure out how many of such a's are possible, correct? That's what it is, right? Now, this point could be a and a. So in this case, both x and y values are same. Distance is same. Perfect. So that's how you get a point. Now, the important thing here is we are talking about distance. 
correct so we have one point here which is we're just calling this point as a as a coordinates on this line are a now what is important to understand is that there should be another point b where the distance is a and minus a so in both these points the y values are the magnitude of y values the distance from y axis and the x axis both is a right perfect so we have some point right there uh, which is further away where the y values will match with the x values so there are basically two points so basically this implies that there are two points on the line 3x plus 8y equals to 24 which will satisfy this particular condition is that clear to you right so that's kind of important to understand if you only get go through the point a a you'll actually get a wrong answer right so so there is another point on this side which we are not shown here but which is clear from the explanation perfect so we'll work out with these two points and find what is the sum of all possible values so we need to figure out what is the sum of all possible values of a right all a's so we want to find sum of all a's which are these two a's right okay so uh, let's find uh, the two values of uh, a we can actually substitute the value here so if i say the point a is a a on the line 3x plus 8y equals 24 that basically means that the point is 3a plus 8a equals to 24 correct so that means 11a is 24 or a is 24 over 11 so we get one value now let us also work out where the the other point which is b so, so the point B is A minus A. The distance again is same. So we get 3A minus 8A equals to 24. So that gives us minus 5A equals to 24 or A is equal to minus 24 over 5. So these are the two values of A, right? We need some, right? So let's add them up. So our answer is... Uh, the two values will be when we add these two values so so we need the sum right of these two values so which will be 24 over 11 minus add them right uh, you can write plus minus 24 over 5 okay so we'll just add them uh, we have denominator common denominator is 55 Multiply this by 5 and that by 24, right? And then 5 times 4, 22. And uh, 5 times 2, 10. 10, 120. Right. So minus 11, right? So 24, 24. So 4, 6, and 2. So that is what you get. Correct. So, so when you add them up, 264 is a negative value, which is higher, right? And 264 minus 120 is 4. And then it is 6 minus 2 is also 4. 144 over 55. Correct. And that is our option B. So that becomes the correct answer for us. So we have our answer, which is option B. So the trick part here is that there are definitely two points and then you get the right answer otherwise if you report 24 over 11 which is option d you actually get a wrong answer so i hope that makes sense here is question number 20 from february 2017 test paper of waterloo question is if m and n are positive integers with n greater than 1 such that m to the power of n equals to 2 to the power of 25 times 3 to the power of 40, then m plus n is what? Five choices are given to you. 
sorry for that bad print, but let me rewrite this, right? So what we are given here is that n is greater than 1. We are also given that m to the power of n is 22 to the power of 25 times 3 to the power of 40. And what we need to figure out is what is m plus n equal to, right? So that is the question which is given to us. Let us see how to solve it. You can always pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. So we are talking about positive integers. And what we notice here is that when we say that m to the power of n is equal to 2 to the power of 25 times 3 to the power of 40, it means that only 2 and 3 are the prime factors of m, correct? So that basically implies that only prime factors of m are 2 and 3, correct? So that means I could always write m as a multiple of 2 and 3, right? So that basically means that I could write m as 2 to the power of something, let that be, let's say, x, times 3 to the power of something, let's say, y. Correct. Since only 2 and 3 are the prime factors of m. Now, getting back to m to the power of n is 2 to the power of x times 3 to the power of y to the power of n, which you could definitely write as 2 to the power of xn times 3 to the power of y n. Now, we can compare the given equation, which let me call this as equation number 1 and this as our equation number 2. So when you compare these two equations, exponents of 2 are 25, here it is x n, for 3 it is 40 and y n. So that means we get two equations, x n is equal to 25, and we also get y n equals to 40. Got it? So now you notice that we have uh, two equations but three unknowns. Now the question here is that we have two equations and three unknowns. So that means you have to do some guess and check or some other uh, conditions you need to figure out to find the three unknowns. So interesting condition here is that we have n as a common factor. Do you see that? So in xn and yn, we have n is common factor of both these terms, right? So let's find the common factor of 25 and 40. That should be n, correct? So n is a common factor of 25 and 40. Perfect. Since x times n is 25 and y times n is 40. So n is a common factor. Perfect. So you know what is the common factor of 25 and 40? Well, we know that the common factor of 25 and 40 is 5. Do you see that? So that is what, and that gives you the value of n, so n is 5 for us. Well, that's not the equation number 5, which I'm writing as circles, anyway. So we get n as 5, and now we can solve what is x and what is y, correct? So we have x as 25 over 5, which is 5, and we have y as 40 over 5 which is 8. So we get the values of x and y. Perfect. Now we can actually get our results. So what we know from here is that x is equal to 5, y is equal to 8, and n is equal to 1. And m plus n. m is 2 to the power of x times 3 to the power of y. So we'll calculate what m is now. So m is 2 to the power of x times 3 to the power of y. We know the value of x and y now. x is 5, y is 8. So it is 2 to the power of 5 times 3 to the power of 
8. Let's use calculator to figure this out. So we have 2 to the power of 5 times 3 to the power of 8. And that is 209952. Perfect. So that is the value of m. And what is m plus n now? m plus n is 209952 plus the value of n which is just 1. Uh, sorry, which was 5. Which is 5, not 1. So we'll add this and get our answer which is 209957. 209957 is option C. So that becomes the solution, right? So we have that as our answer. So answer is option C. So I hope that makes sense. So the idea here is to work with the exponents as we have shown here. So identifying that these are the only prime numbers and then work on the algebra part, we can actually solve this question. I hope that makes sense. Well, the question here is, a cylinder has radius 12 and height 30. So here is your cylinder. So as we go along, I'm going to complete my diagrams and explain you, right? So radius 12, so we are saying this part radius 12 and height of 30. So let's say this height is 30. That is for the cylinder, correct? The outside. The top circular face of the cylinder is the base of a cone, as you can see very clearly. And the center of the bottom circular base of the cylinder is the vertex of the cone. So that becomes the vertex of the cone. A sphere is placed inside so that it touches the cone. So that's the sphere which is touching the cone at two points. The base of the cylinder and the side of the cylinder as shown. Which of the following is closest to the radius of the sphere? Okay, so we need to find the radius of the sphere. And let's say this is the radius R. That's the question for you. Perfect. So you can always pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Now, uh, let's look into this. These are the two points of tangency of sphere with the other surfaces. So let me just... Uh, make this so that would be 90 degrees and that is also r for us so we get this okay now what else we get this point also which is which is also r so that becomes the radius of the sphere and these are the points what you notice is that we can actually find this 30 and this 20 we can find the slant height of this cone, so let me label this, okay, so let's label this as A, let's label everything, A, B, C, D, right, so let's say E, F, okay, and these points G, H, and I, let's see how it works out, okay, so, so all this is labeled now, we can actually calculate what A to F is using this right right triangle correct so so let's make us a um, few guidelines two dimension figure so we are working on this side and we are now figuring out what is this side a to f very less space to solve this um, particular question so i'll squeeze in many things here right so af is square root of that's the hypotenuse correct longer side this is 12 and this is 30, right? That's equal to this side. So it is uh, square root of 12 square plus 30 square. Now calculator is allowed for the math contest. So we'll use the calculator. So we'll have square root of 12 square plus 30 square. That is 6 square root 29. So let's have decimal value. Okay, so we will have this as 32.311, let's approximate, right. Since the answers are given in decimal values rounded to two decimals, I am taking uh, decimal values rounded to three decimals at present in my calculation, okay. Now, 
So we know this whole length, but we also know that this is combination of these two. Okay, so so combination of these two. So we know that these two lengths a to g and a to h should be same. So it is tangents from external point, right? So let me write down this important theorem, which is um, tangents. from external point have equal length okay so that gives us that a to g is equal to a to h now a to g one of this is r right so so a to g could be considered as 30 minus r, right? So that becomes 30 minus r. Clear? So this whole length is 30. Taking away r will give us a to g. Clear? So that means this is also 30 minus r. Right. Now we need to find what is g to uh, h to f. This is what we need to figure out. Now how can you find that? Okay. Now look from this side that is your external point and we have a tangent here and this is also tangent correct so using this theorem which is very important theorem so many contests will use this theorem in some way or the other so from here we can say that f to h let's use this f to h is equal to this side right so f to h is equal to f to i and this whole distance, since that is r, right, this portion is r, correct? And the whole thing is 12 radius, correct? So it is 12 minus r. So we get this, f to h. Simple. Now, as you can see, that a to f is basically sum of a to h and h to f, right? And a to f, we calculated 32.311 should be equal to a to h which is 30 minus r plus h to f which is 12 minus r. So we get our equation and which is 32.311 is equal to when you add them you get 42 minus 2r. Correct? So that should help you to find the correctness. So I hope we are close to it now. So we can say that we can take this on the other side. So we get 2 times r is equal to 42. Take away 32.311 or r is 42. Take away 32.311 divided by 2. Let's use calculator once again. So 42 minus 32.311. So it is divided by 2. Half, right? 4.8445 so 4.84 is the correct answer right 4.84 which is option A correct so we get our answer which is option A which is 4.84 correct so that is how you are going to find the answer so once again here the most important theorem which works for you is that the length of tangents from external point is equal and once you look at this question from this angle it becomes easier to solve this i hope that makes sense sorry for the bad print here the printer is running out of ink and this exam is uh, rather the contest is tomorrow so i thought let me first uh, make some videos for the students okay the question here is Sylvia chose positive integers a, b, and c. So a, b, c are natural numbers. So let's, let me write down as we read. So they belong to set of natural numbers. Peter determined that the value of a plus b over c and got an answer of 101. So a plus b over c is given to you as equal to 101. Paul determined a over c plus b a over c plus b is 68 is 68 
that is what they figure out and Mary determined the value of a plus b over c and got the answer k so we have a plus b over c equals to k the value of k is what that is what you need to figure out five options are given to us you need to find what is the correct option so solve the question and then let's see who gets it first right okay i really love these types of questions which are based on numbers and now let's see what kind of strategy we can adopt to solve this so i hope the question is clear to you we are given three sums two of them are known third we need to find okay so let's see how to work on such questions we have a plus b over c equals to 101 and we have a over c plus b as 68 so i will just add them so if i add them what do i get we get a plus b right and we also get these right so where c is common and we have a plus b equals to add them 9169 so very beautiful number 169 which is 13 square right okay so we get something like this now how can we from here get the answer if you look at these numbers 13 168 152 12 and 169 you could actually guess your answer at this stage it's a multiple choice question correct now what i will do to make it obvious is that i will factor out a plus b so let me uh, factor out a plus b right so if i factor out a plus b think like this so we have got these terms here right so we have a plus b plus a plus b over c equals to 169 so we are factoring a plus b so we get 1 plus 1 over c oh, sorry uh, yeah 1 plus 1 over c equals to 169 clear we just factored this out okay so now we are interested in finding what this number is which is a plus b over c so from here that c we could also take out so let me go two steps here uh, we'll take c as a common factor so we get c plus 1 equals to 169 or a plus b over c and here we have c plus 1 and that is 169 is that clear to you so we had that equation in the form of factors and we know this is the product is 169 now 169 is a very beautiful number which has only factors of what one of the factors 1 13 times 13 and 169 so it has only three factors right so when you multiply these are the only three options well one is not given to you 13 and 169 both are given to us right both are given to us one of them is the correct option right and we know c cannot be zero it has to be greater than zero right so uh, now now this number 169 a plus b over c could be either 13 or 169 correct if i place this as 169 then then c plus 1 should be 1 correct but that is not possible since c cannot be 0 so only possible solution is a plus b over c should be equal to 13 correct in that case we get c plus 1 also as 13 correct so it makes sense it becomes 169 what we really want to find is a plus b over c which is this so we get our answer and the answer is 13 right option a option a is that clear to you right so this really helps so prime factors factorization products multiples these are the common things which will help you solve some of the questions in the contest test paper so always look for uh, such factors and how we can multiply and get our answer that should be the strategy for solving such a question i hope that helps feel free to write your comment share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great thanks for your time and all the best